Now, uh, tensions in the Senate have reached a boiling point after Democrats decided to boycott the hearings of Trump cabinet nominees. Now, in response, the Republicans decided, well, we're not going to put up with that. We're going to go and we're going to change the rules so we can shove those nominees right down your throats. Great. I love how they were the ones who always complained about uh, Democrats shoving nominees. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Now, The Hill is reporting that the Senate Finance Committee has pushed through Stephen Mnuchin, Trump's Treasury Secretary pick, and Representative Tom Price, which is Trump's Health and Human Services pick, with uh, a party line vote. Basically, they started, they changed the rules so that nobody had to be from the other party present to be able to pass them along. Now, The Hill says, by unanimous consent, the Republicans gathered in the hearing room agreed to change the committee's standing rules, which normally require at least one member of each party to be in attendance for committee work to proceed. Now, uh, Democrats uh, are saying, hey, man, the, those people during these hearings, they weren't exactly honest. They weren't honest with us. We want to bring them back. We want to continue to question them. We want to get the truth from them. So no way in hell are we going to actually confirm people who literally lied in our faces. Sherrod Brown from Ohio says, quote, we want the committee to regroup, get the information, have these two nominees come back in front of the committee, clarified what they lied about. And that's a strong statement. Um, I would hope that they apologize for that and then give us the information that we all need for our states. Now, again, that was Democrat Sherrod Brown. So actually trying to be a stronger uh, Democrat. <laughs> that's great. Now, you might be asking, but what did Mnuchin and uh, Price actually lie about? How do you, do you have any proof? Of course. For that, we go to The Intercept. Now, uh, in, uh, David Dayan is writing for The Intercept, and he, and he says that, quote, Mnuchin has repeatedly lied about One West Bank, uh, which he ran from 2009 to 2015, and its history of robo-signing. On two occasions in written responses, Mnuchin has claimed that One West never engaged in the practice known as robo-signing, despite considerable evidence to the, to the contrary. Now, what is robo-signing? A robo-signing is essentially a tactic whereby low-level employees perjure themselves by signing foreclosure documents claiming to verify loan information without ever reviewing the facts. An employee of One West admitted to robo-signing in 2009 deposition, and the Columbus Dispatch found dozens of robo-signed One West documents in Ohio's public records. So, they have records, and yet Mnuchin still, during his uh, hearing, testified that his company did not engage in robo-signing with these foreclosures. So, that is a flat-out lie. That is BS. Um, and for that, we go to the Columbus Dispatch. Now, a dispatch analysis of nearly four dozen foreclosure cases filed by One West in Franklin County in 2010 alone shows that the company frequently used robo-signers. The vast majority of the Columbus area cases were signed by 11 different people in Travis County, Texas. Those employees called themselves vice presidents, assistant vice presidents, managers, and assistant secretaries. In three local cases, a judge dismissed One West foreclosure proceedings specifically based on inaccurate robo-signings. Now, look, I mentioned that, the, the employees, because that's what they do. Somebody who's in a lower position says, no, 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 I'm actually the vice president and I'm going to sign off on these documents. Now, that gives that higher up deniability to do these robots. No, I didn't tell them to do that. I didn't actually do that. That was not, not my signature. Hey, my name. No, that's somebody else. That must have been that low-level employee. Got to get rid of that guy. <laughs> that's the way it works, man. And then when they get caught, they just like um, uh, uh, Wells Fargo. That's it. When they open all those accounts, they just fire all the low-level guys. Sorry, guys. And they originally, of course, they, they pressured these people, these low-level employees, to do this. You either do this or you're not going to have a job. Well, what are you going to do? I mean, you could take the principal route, too. But at the end of the day, you also have to feed your family. So there's that consideration as well. And I'm not defending these people. I'm saying what they're doing is wrong. But I'm saying that there is pressure from up top to commit these acts that are heinous and illegal. Stuff like robo-signing and stuff like opening up accounts and then charging people for those accounts that they never opened in the first place, wildly illegal. Now, 
In case you're wondering, of course, why the Democrats are holding this guy up, it's because, look, the bank is screwing people. New Mnuchin made a lot of money off foreclosing houses during the recession using these robo signings. That's, that's why they're holding this guy up. Okay, it's not because they're throwing a hissy fit. Okay, it's it's because they were actually doing something wrong and the Democrats actually want to get to the truth of it. And that's kind of amazing because you'd never see that kind of spine. You never see that kind of backbone in the, in the Democratic Party. Now, the other person they're holding up, as I said, Tom Price. Now, for this, uh, an explanation, I go back to The Intercept. Now, Price, the HHS nominee, had received a sweetheart deal from something called Innate Immunotherapeutics. Now, this is an Austria, uh, Australian biomedical company to purchase discounted stock shares in a private placement. Now, he told the Senate Finance Committee that the deal was open to all investors in the company. However, the Wall Street Journal reported on Monday that the deal was only available by invitation to fewer than 20 people in the U.S. So again, Tom Price immediately gets caught lying about this. No, 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 no. This, this, it's open to all people, man. I don't, this, do you buy stock in this company? No, dude. You and 20 other, or you and 19 other people were the only ones. You had to be invited. Not good. Now, Price received the invitation from a fellow member of Congress. Uh, this would be Republican uh, from New York, Chris Collins. Now, Collins sits on the board of Innate. When Innate CEO pushed back in the Wall Street Journal story to a CNN uh, reporter, Collins, who accidentally hit reply all to an email, cheered on the CEO for defending Price. So that's how it actually got out. That's how we actually got to know that Chris Collins was involved in this as well. Oops. <laughs> now, uh, what did he get from this private deal, the sweetheart deal? Well, The Intercept explains, the NA private placement has so far paid off with stock storing after price secured legislation that would help push through one of their multiple sclerosis drugs. But the discrepancy between Price's comments to the committee and published reports, along with his other questionable trades of medical stocks, prompted the Democratic boycott. Now, of course, uh, when the boycott started, Republicans immediately pissed off. Why won't you just not? Why, why won't you let this nomination go through? Why you got to hold things up, man? In fact, uh, here you have uh, Orrin Hatch. He said, quote, this is just another way of roughing up the president's nominees. They have been treated fairly. We have not been treated fairly. Oh, you're such a victim. You're such a victim. <laughs> now, he continued by calling it one of the most alarming things I've seen in my last 40 years in the U.S. Senate. He called Democrats idiots for holding up the process after finally adding that I've never seen anything quite like this. Now, we're going to get back to that, but I, I do want to show you some more video of uh Orrin Hatch and his statements on this. I'm really disappointed that uh, my my friends on the other side uh, our Democrats on the other side are deliberately boycotting this uh, markup. Why that's uh, an important thing for them, I'll never understand because these two nominees are going to go through regardless. And they didn't lay a glove on them during the, as far as I was concerned, during the hearings. They had a chance to ask every question that they wanted to ask. They, uh, they were treated fairly, uh, which I always intend to do. I can't understand why senators who know that we're going to have these two people go through can't, uh, can't support the committee in, in, in a markup of these two people. I don't remember us treating their, their uh, nominees this way. And I, at least I can't remember ever doing that. And uh, I'm really disappointed at... Uh... He is so disappointed. He's so disappointed. We've never treated the Democrats like this before. I don't understand where this is coming from. Well, again, I'll get to that in a minute. But I have more reaction from the Republicans. Now, uh, you have Senate Majority uh, Mitch McConnell, who dismissed the Democratic concerns as causing, quote, chaos and called the behavior foolish. 
Quote, there are manufacturing issues on a daily basis to drag this process out and to treat the president's initial cabinet appointments differently from the way we've treated presidents of the Democratic Party in similar circumstances. <laughs> you love that? They are absolutely throwing a fit. Why don't you Democrats just forget about that and just let people, just let our nominees go through already? I mean, don't ask any questions. Just lay down, shut up, and take it. <laughs> now, again, let's get back because from both of those quotes, and you saw the video, we've never, we've never seen anything like this before. We certainly never treated any of the Democratic nominees like this ever. Really. Well, in 2013, Republicans boycotted a committee vote on the nomination of Gina McCarthy. Now, Gina McCarthy was going to lead the EPA. Now, at the time, the Democrats just, or I'm sorry, the Republicans, just like the Democrats, were seeking more information from McCarthy. Now, does that sound familiar? That's exactly what's going on today. The Democrats are saying, we need more information, and we'd actually like you to stop lying for, to us. Hmm, that would be great. Now, interestingly enough, one of the ones that uh, was uh, holding up Gina McCarthy was somebody called Jeff Sessions. Now, Sessions is currently nominated to be the Attorney General. Now, look, eventually McCarthy did get confirmed, and look, they did it without the Democrats having to change the rules to push their nominees through, which again is different from the Republicans who have changed the rules to shove their nominees through. They're like, democracy? Fuck that. We're going to push these guys right down your throats. Are you still convinced that you can work with the Republicans? Are you still convinced that there are checks and balances in the government? No, you give the Republicans absolute power, they're going to use it. Not only that, but remember, the, De the Republicans withheld even a hearing on the nomination of Merrick Garland. Merrick Garland, again, he was uh, set to replace, he was Obama's pick to replace Antonin Scalia on the Supreme Court. They had kept him, they had blocked him for over a year. Just happened to be the last year of Obama's presidency. Now, look, I wasn't a huge fan of Merrick Garland. Let's be honest. He was a bit corporatist. He was a centrist judge. He was definitely an Obama pick. At least a late Obama pick. And still, they blocked him. Even though he deserved a hearing, this was Obama's pick. This is a stolen seat. This is an absolutely stolen seat. And of course, now that Trump won the election... Well, now they get to nominate an incredibly right-wing judge, a man by the name of Neil Gorsuch, uh, who is, look, somebody who's a uh, corporatist, somebody who is uh, in favor of putting religion over people. He voted in favor of Hobby Lobby uh, against Obama's contraception mandate. And of course, the worst part is he will most likely enable the pillaging of our government by the Trump administration. And he will occupy, most importantly, a stolen seat. So please, Republicans, don't whine about obstruction. When it's all the Republicans did for the last eight years. Guess what? Shoes on the other foot, bitch. Now, look, I gotta, I gotta give some credit here. Great reporting from The Intercept. Great reporting from the Columbus Dispatch for really digging into, uh, you know, these, these issues with Steven Mnuchin as well as uh, with Tom Price. I mean, it actually takes journalism to do that. And look, I also got to give uh, the Democrats some credit here for actually showing a spine. So, I mean, you know, you guys, they're actually doing good work. They're actually saying, hey, wait a minute, this is wrong. We are going to block. We are going to obstruct until we get some answers for the American people. So, and this is rare that I give the Democrats credit for actually standing up for doing the right thing. So... What I guys, what I want you guys to do is tweet at people like Sherrod Brown. Tell them that he's doing a good job. Tell them that, hey, keep doing what you're doing, man. You're doing a good job. You're actually trying to represent us. You're actually trying to protect us from people like Mnuchin and Tom Price. So, and look, these politicians, they get enough of those messages. They actually will respond because they actually are worried about what the constituents think about them because they have to worry about re-election. So tell them to keep fighting because while they look, while the Republicans may be able to still push through Mnuchin and Price and they could do that by, of course, uh, yes, the Democrats could filibuster this 
And then the Republicans just say, okay, well, nuclear option. Let's go with the nuclear option. And then what that would do is that it would allow them to push through Mnuchin and basically any appointee uh, with a simple majority. So, and look, the Democrats did that. Harry Reid did that. He went nuclear. When he did that, we kind of figured, well, if the Republicans ever get into power, be careful what you do, because then you're going to have Republicans that are going to come back and do the same exact thing. So, and that's what, that's what Hatch was talking about. Well, they're going to go through anyway. They're going to go through anyway. Yes, because you're going to shove them through by changing the rules. That's what they do, man. <laughs> but still, I think it's still, even though it's more symbolic, it's still good to sit there and, and to go out and fight. And that's what I got to give the Democrats credit for, because look, it's good politics. And to be honest, they're, it, hey, you know, a part of politics is actually playing politics. And in this case, it is actually good politics if you do it right, because you're going to send the message that you're being strong, that you're standing against Donald Trump. And you're going to need that strength if you ever have any hope of taking back the Senate when it comes up in 2018, the House and the Senate. So credit to the Republicans, credit to great journalism uh, and great reporting from The Intercept. And uh, look, Democrats, stay strong. Don't allow them to, uh, uh, you know, don't don't side with them. If they're going to push it through, let it push them, let them push it through on their own. Because that decision, that's going to end up hanging them in the end. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent non-corporate media, go to our Patreon page and become a patron. Patreon.com slash TYTNation.